So Mark, did you see those drunk moms gallivanting around Win, hopping on the carousel, getting in the flowers, having a good time, right? Is this a valid behavior in Las Vegas? I mean, who hasn't wanted to get in the middle of like the Bellagio flowers or something, you know, just climb in and immerse yourself in the beauty. But, you know, you expect that from like, bro frat boy not <laughs> middle-aged mom it's kind of wild i wonder how security treats them versus like you said a drunk guy you know the people they normally deal with who are doing this sort of stuff maybe just get them out it looked like it was all in good fun but you know you kind of destroy those flowers and everything for everybody else so glad they enjoyed it but don't do that i don't think it's nice for security to have to dig you out yeah you're ruining something beautiful for for, for everyone else you can just get naked and dance on the tables like middle-aged guys do that, that's the perfect solution Mark, a tragedy happened this week in Las Vegas. We had to talk about it really quickly. There was a mass shooting at UNLV. Three people were killed, and we don't know a lot about it. The guy was apparently trying to become a professor. We're not going to say his name, and he decided to take people's lives for no reason at all. Another tragedy for Las Vegas and sort of weighing heavy over the city right now. Yeah, and it's just sad to see and kids not feeling safe in a you know school system, which we've dealt with for years now, and it's getting worse and worse. And it's something that's hit close to home here. We had a similar situation at Michigan State, where a guy just went into a random building and started shooting students, and and then you know a, a high school a couple years back, fifteen minutes away from where my kids go to school had a, a shooter take multiple lives. And it's just sad to see that this is where we're at in the world and, and life is thought of so little. It doesn't make any sense and nobody can ever make sense of it. And that's the toughest thing, I think, is like, what brings you to this point that you just go in and open fire on people that you don't know that didn't do anything to you. And it keeps happening. It's, it's really sad. Yeah, this hit very close to home for me. My niece goes to UNLV and uh, she lives on campus. Her boyfriend was on his way to that exact hall where the shooting happened for his class when he got the text. So uh, just very scary. But my heart goes out to all the families, to all the students who had to live through this. And of course, to the families and everybody who had uh, victims and who's suffering through here. This is just another terrible event for the community. No other words to say. It's just a sad part of what we have to deal with today and what young people have to deal with today. And yeah, it's just happening way too often. It's good to see the campus police, you know, respond quickly and neutralize it in a, a timely manner. We've seen some other times where that didn't happen the way it probably should have. So at least they got there as quickly as possible and, and limited the, you know, aftermath that would have happened. So I'm glad to see that. And kudos to all them that put their their selves in the line of fire to help out the community in that way. Yes, thank you to the first responders who got there, the UNLV detectives who engaged right away. Great job in protecting everybody. So let's move on to something that's more exciting. This week, all the Brightline trolls, the train trolls, were coming out as Brightline secured $3 billion in federal financing to which everybody with the train to Victorville nonsense came out. So apparently there's this whole group of people who hasn't followed this project for years and they just like to crap on it. And we've covered how they've done step by step to basically get this thing, right? All the rights of way, all the union contracts, everything that they needed to do. And now they have that federal funding. The rest of the $12 billion that they need will be funded by their owners, Fortress Investment Group. That company has about $45 billion in assets under management. So deep pockets. It looks like we are a go to start construction soon. The amount still blows my mind. $12 billion to put some train tracks in the desert for the most part. Like it's not hilly. I know there's a mountain at the end you got to deal with and, and stuff like that at points. But it's probably one of the easier places you would think to put train track down. It, maybe that's why we've never really developed our railroad system like other countries and you know, as much as we hate that, because I'd love to ride a train to other states and stuff like that easily and not, you know, get stranded like you do on the current system. But this cost is just mind blowing. It is, but we spend so much money on roads. But yeah, the total project is actually 15 billion three plus the 12 private financing. This will run mostly along Interstate 15 and will go all the way to your favorite city of Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, and then it will cut into the Metrolink down to, there, so you'll be able to get into L.A. I, I have to visit Rancho Cucamonga and find, like, the coolest bar in the town just once, just because. Is there maybe yeah. two bars? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. So Rancho Cucamonga on the map. So for all the people who are saying, well, this has just been vaporware for 20 years, it's never going to happen. No, Brightline took over this project about five years ago, and uh, they've been slowly working towards it. And the project for high-speed rail that's most ready to go, and we're excited for it, 
Does that mean it's the best route? Should it go deeper into LA? Will it be successful? All those questions are good ones, but you know, get it right. If you're going to trash it and say it's a train to Victorville, then I'm not going to listen to your opinion because you don't even know what the heck you're talking about. Don't mess with Sean's trains, man. Yeah, I got a little triggered on uh, Twitter uh, about this. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this mega mansion that was just sold it for $25 million. This place is crazy and it was built... Back when I was in high school, I used to go to Durango High School, which is not far from here. So I watched this get built for the Prince of Brunei. And the rumors at the time were that like all his concubines would live there and everything else. But apparently the whole thing never got finished uh, because of some legal troubles he had. But this place is crazy. 110,000 320 square feet. So it's basically a compound, multiple buildings. And Michael Jackson lived there for a while in 2007 when he moved to Las Vegas. So an interesting history here. It's part of the very legendary kind of old school Spanish trails neighborhood. That's where like Steve Wynn used to live back in the day. And a lot of the, you know, higher ups in the city lived back in that time, but it has its own private entrance. It looks incredible. And $25 million seems like a bargain, but I guess they still have to finish a lot of the inside. Yeah, we found the one thing in Vegas that took longer to build than Fountain Blue. <laughs> ba <-doom>, boom <-sh. laughs> Well, no, I mean, what is there, like 46 restrooms or something crazy? I don't know. Did they do like the massive flush all at once to test uh, the pipes uh, for this compound? I don't know what, what you would ever need something like this for or how you would fill it with people, but it would be amazing. And I'd, I'd love to walk around at one time and just uh, check it out and see what the other side lives like, but... Yeah, to buy it for $25 million, it started in 96 and it's still not finished is also crazy. What's funny in dating myself in Las Vegas, that's on Durango, basically in Hacienda area. And that area was sort of the end of the city for a long time. The 215 runs out there now, but this was all built before that. So we used to go off-roading in the desert right next to there. And now it's just all city for miles and miles and miles in all directions. So it kind of grew in, but... This property was always one I looked at. For reference, it ties the highest sale ever, a $25 million sale up in McDonald Highlands, that big house on the hill. If you're ever in Las Vegas, you can see it. It kind of stands above the city of Henderson. That one is only like 15,000 square feet sold for $25 million. Although apparently whoever bought it, like relisted it for $34 million. So maybe that will be the new record. We shall see. But this sold in nine days at full asking price. Somebody's going to move in. We just don't know who yet. A whole lot of somebody's like you can't just have one family moving in there. <laughs> As a reminder, our Patreon is now going. We do a weekly after show. You can watch it. You can listen to it. Patreon.com forward slash MTM Vegas. Thanks to everybody who supports us over there. Love that community a lot. It's a, a lot of fun chatting with everybody. So the NHL draft has announced that they're coming to the sphere. And this is good news. This will be the very first sporting event as a sphere, even though we know that UFC is trying to get that Mexican Independence Day thing going. We're told that like it's on the books for sphere. This is what I've heard, but I haven't heard any uh, formal announcements on the UFC thing, but NHL still inking contracts. They're coming to the sphere to bring the draft there. I think it's a perfect venue for that. Yeah, I think it's a great setup for that. Hopefully they do it with, you know, NFL drafts, probably the biggest of the drafts. So hopefully they get that one in there and just being able to like blast it all on the outside of the sphere as well as what's going on in the inside when people come up on the stage and all that stuff like i don't think a ton of people watch the nhl draft so i think maybe this is like the starting point and then they can get nba and nfl to come in there and i think it works well that's about the amount of seating that you would normally see for these draft parties and people watching it and then all the teams being there so i i think it's awesome i'm excited to see what it looks like Vegas has turned into such a big NHL town, such a big hockey town with the Golden Knights. So it fits in really well with hey, that. It's amazing. Be careful how you use hockey town. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the real hockey town, the new one. I mean, you guys lost the right to that title, right? And now we just took it. So uh, oh, okay. yeah, we're, we're doing it. But we have become, right, in just a matter of five, six years, Vegas and the NHL are sort of very well known to be together, you know, even when you get outside of Las Vegas. So this makes a ton of sense. It will be on June 28th and 29th. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Another good use of the sphere, another uh, check in James Dolan's box, even though there was talk this week that the sphere is in serious financial trouble and that the sphere entertainment company, which is that company they split off from Madison Square Garden or MSG, may be filing bankruptcy. So we'll have to keep a eye on that. It's still very preliminary, but that's not a surprise to us. And uh, I think Vital Vegas was the one who nicknamed it the bankruptcy bulb. So we shall see. Yeah, I mean, they got those four fish shows coming. That will that will cure things, right? Absolutely. That plus UFC and the NHL draft, and it's all good. That's a whole calendar full right there. <laughs> so did you see the sign from Harry Reid Airport? Five, four, three, two, one. 
This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It says, five hours before departure, leave your hotel. Four hours before departure, turn in your rental car. Three hours, you check your bags. Two hours, get in line at security. So it's taking you an hour to check a bag, an hour to get you know from your hotel to drop your rental car. And then it says, be at your gate an hour before departure. I leave my house 35 minutes to 45 minutes before departure uh, and get to the gate right before boarding every single time. Security at Harry Reid, pretty good. Five hours? Yeah, I don't know the hour traffic. I don't know if they're thinking like F1 still happening or, or what's going on there. That seems crazy. I've never taken longer than 20, 25 minutes to get to the airport from various locations around Vegas. And then security, like you said, is always pretty quick, even though it's a bigger airport. You know, I usually move, even if there's a longer line, you move within 20, 25 minutes through security for the most part, you know, unless something irregular happens where like the one time all the TSA agents left for a bit or, or whatever, but that's the anomaly there. So I don't know. I don't get it. This just seems like overkill that you might've seen like in the early 2000s and not now. I don't know why this would come out now. I think somebody came up with the clever premise five, four, three, two, one. And then they had to like, you know, shoehorn everything into that. Uh, I'm really curious everybody out there, how you do it. Cause I live here. So my experience may be a little different. But when you're visiting here, how long ahead do you go to the airport? Do you want to get there like a lot ahead? C-Note on Twitter asked why I don't go to the Centurion Lounge or the lounges. I just would rather, you know, minimize my time in the airport on departure. I definitely do lounges when I'm connecting or I'm in other cities and stuff. But yeah, I, at Vegas, I don't really do it very much anymore. So I'm really interested to see, do you get there really early? Do you gamble? Do you go to the lounges or do you like, try to get there as close to departure as possible? Let us know down in the comments, but please don't leave your hotel five hours ahead of time unless it's some crazy weekend or something. And if you have pre-check, always pretty quick. And I also have clear through my platinum card, which is as a backup. I never use it at Vegas airport, but I could do that as well. So it's easier to have those little things and then minimize your time at the airport that's the way i say it but what the heck do i know yeah maybe they just have had like issues with not enough slot play at the airport so they want people there to gamble more that's the only that's the first thing that came to my mind you know the extra hour between security and stuff because there is a lot of stuff before you get through security and some gambling so maybe they're just wanting people to shop more and spend money on the uh, slots i don't know so boring company finished their seventh tunnel at westgate i think they broke through about a week or two ago and they've gotten the whole machine out of there now and uh, so yeah moving along we still don't know when the main tunnels will start to get built these are all still those convention center tunnels they have the one to resorts world we know encore uh, is coming online at some point and westgate as well so it's good to see that but the wider system is still oh, who knows how long away. Yeah, we're done with F1, so now we can talk about Teslas and tunnels again. I'm glad I'm glad we're back to that. But no, it's cool to see like it, it looks you know out of this world when you see the <laughs> the ground start to rumble and and you can see the the drill underneath doing its thing. So it kind of reminds me of like the worms from Dune coming up and pops out and and there it is. Uh, so it's it's cool to see something unique you don't wouldn't see anywhere else. Yeah, and it's sort of interesting to think of the idea of all these tunnels underground. Uh, especially as we see them sort of break through and, you know, we get to see all of it. There's going to be a ton of them everywhere. It's like an underground ant colony of little, you know, tunnels and everything else. But I'm excited. Teslas. I like this system. Yeah, Tesla. <laughs> Teslas are the little ants. I don't know. This is the worst analogy I've ever made, Mark. <laughs> and people didn't even see the offline part where I didn't know how to say hey, ant put colony. It <laughs> but yeah, good to see this progress moving along. And hopefully we start seeing those main tunnels under construction soon so we can get a wider system because we're now like what in the year three of the convention center part of the Vegas loop. So time to get some more stuff going, but uh, progress is good. And progress happened indeed this week as a new casino opened in Las Vegas. It was supposed to open towards the end of November. Unfortunately, they postponed it to December 5th, which meant I was out of town. So I couldn't go on opening day, but we're going this weekend. I almost snuck over there yesterday, but I want to experience it with you for the first time so we're talking about what we saw on social media and then on another show next week we'll talk about the best sort of things that we like kind of dig deep based on what we see when we're there but this place looks good one thing i saw from the very start is it looks very different than other casinos did you see how much light there is on the casino floor yeah there's a lot of gold too like they have light colors and then a ton of lights on top of that so it's very bright even though there's not natural light coming in which i like i mean low ceilings though that's my my one complaint that i've seen on videos is the ceilings are very very low so it's nice that at least it's bright and not dark and low it makes you feel like you're in a you know a small cave so this seems like it's maybe a nicer version of Red Rock. It's smaller. You could call it Red Rock's, you know, smaller sister or something. I don't know. But certainly the level of quality there seems to be up there with Red Rock, Green Valley Ranch, maybe even above it. 
Uh, this is the direction that Station Casinos is going in with their new properties. We saw them tear down all their sort of old properties that were of a different era, like Fiesta, like Texas Station, and move towards things better. We're watching them renovate Green Valley Ranch and Red Rock, even renovate things in other casinos like Sunset Station and Santa Fe Station. So overall, Station Casinos upping their game. And we see that this casino, beautiful. The carpet is sort of interesting. I got to see it in person. Although let's talk about the sports book real quick because it has this very like green and white checkered carpet, which is super interesting and different. And of course it has that indoor and outdoor space. This looks like, this looks unlike any other sports book in Vegas. And I love the drone shots. I love that we're in an era where the casinos can put drones through the, through it and we can see kind of a bird's eye view of it. I loved everything I saw. I can't wait to hang out. Yeah. Even some of the pictures that people took and, and posted that went to the preview like I thought the outdoor, indoor, outdoor space was actually outdoor because they didn't take like a, a bird's eye view of it. And you just see, you know, the fake carpet and then the wall that they put behind it that makes it look like you're in an outdoor patio, which I'm a little bit sad that it's not an actual outdoor patio. But it looks really cool. And it's kind of like, you know, got the, the yard games and stuff like that to, to keep you there and, and more of like a hangout spot. So I'm thinking that might be one of the better places to check it, you know, check out a game if you want to make bets and everything like that. I'm excited to see that the pool area. You only got like a brief view of it from uh, Durango, but it looks really nice. Looks decent sized enough for a smaller and, uh, you know, 200 room hotel. So I think that will be something to check out. And I just wish the prices would drop. Somebody said in May they were looking and it was still like $400. So I'm hoping it comes down to the $200 a night ballpark. I'm not going to pay uh, $400 to go there, but I, I can't wait to check it out. Yeah, it only has a couple hundred rooms, so they don't have a ton to fill there. And I suspect that they're probably uh, doing pretty well considering the product that they're putting on. This is probably 15 minutes from the Strip, so it'll be interesting to see if it draws a lot of tourists away. That area of Las Vegas has grown a lot, so there's probably a lot of demand, just people who don't want to be on the Strip, who want to visiting friends and family, stuff like that. But I didn't see very many negative sentiments from anybody about the way it looked, about the way it felt, the venues inside. It's not a huge property, and their phase two is supposedly coming soon. I would imagine, based on the feedback and everything, that that will start construction fairly soon. I believe we'll get a movie theater, maybe a bowling alley. I forget. They did announce what was going to be in phase two. But uh, yeah, the George Sportsman's Grill, that place looked great. The Hall of Foods, Mark, looked very good as well. And it does look like they checked off the boxes, a lot for locals, some for tourists. And did you see like the crowd on opening day, they are bursting through the doors. It looked like people, old, young, everyone in Vegas wanted to come out and see it. Yeah, I loved it. I even saw some people bringing their kids like it was <laughs> something to be memorialized with their children. I don't know. I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, all ages, which is cool to see that everybody's excited about it. And I wish we could have been there. You know, I'm looking forward to it this weekend. Ho I'm expecting it to be very busy, but not hopefully over the top busy like it was uh, opening day you know it's weird how i talk about growing up in las vegas and stuff and the casino culture is real and we get excited for stuff like this and we bring our kids and it's part of it i remember being brought to new casinos when i was a kid and it's sort of strange if you are not inside the bubble of it and you know how would this be a thing why is a casino so exciting for a community and i guess there are real arguments against why it shouldn't be but that's just not how we do it in vegas you open a new casino we get excited this is i don't know the equivalent of opening up a movie theater in a little town that never had one or something i don't know we, we're way too excited about this kind of stuff but i'm glad it's a good one you and the analogies today man you're just you're killing them <laughs> They're bad too, so uh, it's not my uh, not my finest day. But let us know what you guys think about anything we talked about today. Durango, all the visuals that you saw. Are you excited for it? Did you get to go on opening day? Hit us up in the comments. The big mansion, the drunk moms at Win, everything we talked about. Hit us up in the comments. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we'll be back in a couple of days with another show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody. Hopefully, I see some of you in Vegas this weekend. So it's just going to be like this little underground ant, you know, ant thing. And what is it? What is it? An ant? I don't know. You know, the ant. I don't know. Okay. Never. Ant hill. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Are you talking about like the thing that you have like in your house yeah. with all the ants? I don't yeah, know. yeah. Colony. Colony. Colony.